Hello everyone. So <clears throat> my name is Yann Corsial and for the next 20 minutes or so I will be talking about planets, real-time hyper amplification of planets. So let's go ahead. First I will give you a brief bit of context. So why in, uh, in the first place in computer graphics do we need to talk about planets and what has been done so far on this topic. So uh, planetary modeling is uh, related to uh, the broader scope of uh, virtual worlds used in some industries. So for instance, in video games, you will find that there is a, a long trend, a long lasting trend about open worlds, uh, which is now pushed to the extreme with uh, emerging titles like Star Citizen by CIG or Beyond Good and Evil 2 by uh, Ubisoft. And these, uh, these titles, they, they enable the player to very specific gameplay to explore entire planets. And in movies, science fiction uh, is getting very popular over the years, and there is now a need there to depict planets too. So, <clears throat> where do we stand in the academia? Well, you will find a large body of work on classic terrain modeling. That would be terrains of limited extent, at the very most 100 km, and defined over a planar topology. So, this is uh, quite a number of papers, but when it comes to planet-sized terrains, there are very, very few, few work indeed present in the literature. So you will find Musgrave 1998, which is a noise-based solution that is tied to the uh, Mojo World software package. So the terrains are very self-similar due to the fractal nature of the model and very unintuitive to control. Then there is Derzov 2011, which is a very interesting piece of work uh, featuring rivers in real time with continuous level of detail defined of an entire planet. But the, all the terrain, as you can see on the picture in the background, is very homogeneous because it is uh, calculated by a midpoint displacement only. There is no control provided and uh, the overall terrain feels, feels very, very basic. And then there is Corsian 2019, which is work by ourselves, which is uh, basically a method to, to generate large scale features of a, of a planet. So continents, mountain ranges and such. But the amplification part of the paper is very not satisfying. Uh, the resolution is quite coarse, 100 meter. It is based on height uh, map blending. And therefore there is no uh, river unlike DASAF 2011. So given all of this, we propose a new method to, to come up with real-time detail and more realistic planets. The first set of goal uh, that we propose is to keep the, the interesting parts of previous works, mostly the rivers of DASAF 2011, but provide surrounding terrain that is hydrographically uh, consistent. And overall, we want to focus on the terrain aspect of the modeling and provide more variety, realism, etc. Then we want to provide some control capabilities and we would like to keep, it, keep the method compatible with previous methods that deal with large scale features like the tectonics method and all of this should be done in real time. So this is our pipeline. Uh, I will start from the left. Um, there you will see a pre-processing step stage. Uh, then we will go into two more stages, which are uh, online uh, real-time computations. I will go over uh, each one of them starting with the low resolution model, which is the first stage. So we, pro we construct a, a low resolution triangulation, essentially, of precision 50 km. There are five steps involved. The first one being capturing user input as control maps. So it defines some parameters like uh, crust elevation, age, humidity. And then we added some extra features, like, for example, plateaus and hill systems. 
The next step is about sampling the, the control maps, uh, the input. The, so we create a distribution of points over the sphere and we store the control data in it. So this is a, a Poisson disk sampling, a, a good way to come up with a, an irregular, a quite irregular distribution of points. Then we uh, triangulate those points. Uh, we need uh, a well-formed triangulation, so a spherical Delaunay triangulation does the job. Uh, it needs to be well-formed because it will undergo massive subdivision in, later on in, uh, in the following stages. Uh, we need it also to be irregular because uh, essentially we will grow a river network and uh, the rivers need to be irregular to look natural. So for the next step, we start the large scale river network creation by cleaning up the coast. So essentially we fit the, the continents and the coast to the mesh, to the edges of the mesh. And then we place river mouth. We ensure that each river mouth has proper river access to the ocean. So there are specific calculations done for this. For this sorry. The next step, the last step, is the large scale river growing. So the network growing. We start from the mouth. We use something similar to Genevo 2013. And we use a stochastic conquering strategy to grow the network. Then following that, we post compute river attributes and embed it into the mesh, like water elevation, the Orton Strala number, and the flow of the rivers. So back to our pipeline, that was the, the pre-processing step. Now we begin the real-time computations to produce the detailed model. This would be achieved through a, <clears throat> a massive subdivision, a parallel process applied to edges and faces of the mesh. So basically we refine, subdivide the mesh to meet a target uh, level of detail based on screen space error. The subdivision relies on a scheme, so I will detail it now. So given a triangle at a given uh, level of detail, we first uh, subdivide the edges like so. So we displace horizontally and vertically uh, the new vertices. Then we create the internal edges and then the internal faces. So each vertex stores some data, topology, control, which are the control inputs by the user that we propagate into the, the subdivi subdivision, and then modeling data per se. So that would be a type of the vertex, elevation, and then hydrographic uh, parameters. Each edge also stores some topology and then a type. So the subdivision is driven by a set of rules. This, there are two sets of, of rules. These are the rules tied to the terrain and uh, river edges for the edge subdivision step. For, the, for example, this one uh, simply refines a river edge. This one creates uh, a new crest or ridge vertex in between two river vertices, but unrelated. This one creates uh, a terrain vertex uh, alongside the slope that leads to the river. This is the second set of rules I, I was mentioning. So this applies to the phase subdivision, subdivision step. So when we create the internal edges, we have to decide their type. So for example, IB1 will decide to create a, a new river branch. There is a test involved, uh, beta, which basically deals with the, the junction angle and deterministic stuff because it is parallel, parallel processing. And then uh, later on, the new river spring will be decided by uh, specific rules tied to the edge subdivision step. So otherwise, we create a terrain edge. So each new vertex needs to be assigned some attributes to. So topology, control data, which is simply a propagation by a means, and then new model data. So to come up with the new model data, if you recall, this is elevation uh, and hydrographic parameters. We trigger compute graphs on each parameter. So each rule will trigger a compute graph. This is an example for rule, uh, rule R5. 
This is uh, the rule that deals with uh, terrain edges and terrain vertices only. So this graph computes the final elevation of the vertex. Uh, basically, this is a graph of nodes, uh, internal nodes or operator nodes, and uh, source nodes or generator nodes, which are a combination of shader uh, instructions. So for now, we have only seen rivers and terrain aspects of the, the real-time modeling sub of the sub subdivision. Um, now there are extra features too, like for example, uh, gullies, which are ravines, which are dry drainage patterns similar to rivers. So they obey another set of rules, but as there is no water involved, the computation are a bit simpler. Then there are lakes. So a lake is essentially uh, an extension of a, uh, of a river, like so. So we create a new lake vertex and it will propagate through the subdivision and we create uh, an extended area of water. We ensure planarity of the lake uh, through specific computations in the phase subdivision step. Now back to the pipeline, the last stage, which is still online in real time, is the surface displacement. So the, this last stage comes up after the subdivision stage. So basically as input, we have the raw subdivided mesh that meets the target resolution. And now we want to enhance it, uh, further shape it with hydrographic features. So that means uh, riverbeds and fluvial valleys. So basically, this is a, another parallel process that applies this time to each vertex. We displace it uh, vertically only, and we use the model parameters, uh, specifically um, the hydrographic parameters like distance to the nearest river, etc. We shape riverbeds and valleys. This I will now illustrate it on a, on a concrete example. A practical example. So this is the a screenshot. We can see at the bottom that uh, the riverbed is not at all present. The river is ill-defined, and uh, the valley is absent. This is a subdivision only. Now, if we apply the surface displacement to shape and prescribe uh, hydrographic features, this is the result with, that we get. You can see the riverbed is clearly defined at the bottom, the lake appears, and then we have this nice deep uh, V-shaped valley that surrounds the river up to the distance. Okay, that was basically the description of the, the modeling pipeline, the three stages. Now I will discuss a bit more about implementation. So the pre-process is, uh, is done on the CPU. It takes about 500 milliseconds to perform. And then we have the GPU uh, implementation of the subdivision and the surface displacement followed by post-processing. These are all massively parallel operations. Uh, this uh, graph represents the GPU uh, side of the modeling. So in orange, uh, each, each orange box is a, a compute shader, a compute job, and the blue boxes are graphics uh, operations. To, on, the, on the top row, you can see the one modeling run, which starts with uh, the splitting of edges in parallel, and then followed by ghost operations. So ghost operations, I haven't mentioned it before, but uh, it is in the paper. Uh, it's basically a way to prevent uh, cracks and to have cracks in the terrain uh, due to differing uh, level of details in neighboring tri triangles. And then we split faces. This is repeated until the, the, the target uh, level of detail is reached. And then we have post-processing like surface displacement, water vertices creation, etc. On the bottom row is the rendering loop. So this is exec executed once per frame. And we have also compute shaders that bridge between the model and the rendering. So time for some results. So 
Okay, so we developed the, the prototype from scratch uh, in C++ and OpenGL. We went for true to scale planets at uh, about 6,000 kilometers radius, similar to Earth, and a ground precision of 50 centimeter. So it all runs in real time, and the worst case frame rate is about 25 FPS when we get uh, above 4 million uh, triangles for the terrain only and a lot of water surface which doubles the count of triangles like for instance when you get close to a, a, a large mountain lake surrounded by mountains and with uh, proper atmospheric scattering uh, this is a breakdown of a modeling run so this is uh, executed asynchronously on the on the GPU f through compute operations it takes about 80 milliseconds and please note that this does not does not stall the frame rate the rendering operations are separate so basically you get a, a, a nice view of all the operations uh, involved in uh, one modeling run so basically it's quite equally shared between the edge split and the face split and the post processing whereas the surface displacement is quite minor this is a view uh, of three screenshots uh, assembled so it illustrates what we one of our initial goal which was to come up with nice uh, varied heterogeneous terrains so to the top we have plateaus in dry desert areas, we have lakes, we have mountains, we have nice river networks to the right. So this is we consider a fulfilled goal. Now uh, this video shows this is a series of video. There are, there will be three of them that shows the impact of parameters, control parameters. This is a, a, a high mountain young region. This is the same view, the same camera path through the same area of the same planet, but with differing parameters. Now this is an old uh, mountain range. Okay. This is the same path, the same view again, but with uh, zero humidity and plateau presence. Okay. This is a side-by-side -side comparison. To the right is our method, and to the left is simply a basic previous classic subdivision by midpoint displacement. This is the same camera path, the same planet. Finally, we want to illustrate the scale range of, the, of our method as we went for two to scale planets. So we have rivers, varied terrain, valleys, different shapes of slopes leading to rivers and lakes, and a nice zoom out on a full true to scale planet. Okay, time to conclude. So this is a recap of our contributions. So we did come up with a well, rich, uh, varied planetary terrains, uh, while keeping the good idea of DASAF 2011 to produce uh, river networks. We did offer some user control through high-level maps, and also the possibility to, to plug the method, our method, to uh, actual large-scale features uh, generation method, like the tectonics method. And also we come up with a, a nice parallel real-time subdivision scheme that is a bit more elegant than previous method, at least a bit simpler to implement. Now for future work, um, we, could we have a lot to say, but I don't have much time. So we will leave this for questions, I guess. Uh, maybe there's something to do for the collision part with the terrain for the physics engine. Uh, we could have denser river networks, but this would mean changing the subdivision scheme. And of course, we would like more realism in the terrain. Okay, thank you.